we are in a league where some teams will, what's great about the Big Eight and the league I coach in is we'll have teams that will press us for 32 minutes and we'll have teams that will play Pac-Man, um, teams that will zone us. I mean, we have, we have it's a wide variety of, of what we'll see. Um, so everybody go down there on that baseline. So what we do is we do this progression maybe two or three times a week um, where we just work on our pressure and we work on getting pressured. Um, so the, the way we start the drill isn't anything to do with really pressure, but we'll do a one-on-one -on -one drill. So 24's got the ball, somebody defend him. And we'll just let them play deep, we'll let them play one-on-one -on -one in the alley, okay? So they gotta stay between this side of the free throw line and this side. All right, so the defense has an advantage here. There's no way that he should be able to score if, if I know he can't go outside that alley. Uh, so we'll just work on one-on-one. -on -one. We'll work on footwork. We'll work on taking charges. We'll work on zigzagging them all the way back up and down. It's a good way to start the drill that we're eventually going to get into. All right, go ahead. So turn them, turn them. Stay low, stay low, stay low. All right, stop. Go back there again. So when we do this drill, the, our rule whenever we do one-on-one -on -one or do zigzag kind of things, if you get beat and you call help, they have to stop. Okay, so grab the ball and bring it up here. Come here, come here. All right, so I'm defending. We're playing one-on-one. -on -one. You know, it's been 30 years since I played basketball, but I'm playing one-on-one -on -one and he beats me. All I have to do is yell help and he has to stop. So what I'm trying to do is I'm trying teach them to communicate I just got burned someone on my team helped me okay it's not necessarily gonna happen in the full court but it might happen down there in the half court so that makes him stop I can come back I can come back and defend and then we can go keep going one-on-one -on -one. so um, you'd be surprised it takes me about two or three weeks to get him to really yell that so I can hear it go ahead go now he shouldn't get beat when he can't get outside the alley Help, 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 help! Okay, next group. Get a ball, grab a ball. One more. We'll do a couple more and then give me one more group going one on one and everybody else down there then. Help, help, help! Okay. Point made. Thank you guys. Point made. Point made. Um, so we'll work on that. Again, I, you know, Bo's a Hall of Famer. Bo's going to be in, uh, you know, in the Hall of Fame. He should already be in the Hall of Fame. But he, he is so good at teaching his guys how to defend. You don't defend with your hands. And if you're going for a steal, you, I mean, I've been at his practices. If you're going for a steal and you do this, you get, the, you get his wrath. If you do this, he's okay with it. Okay? So, um, you know, same thing with the post. He teaches better than anyone I've ever seen to defend from here to here, okay? His theory is, you know, when his face turns all red and you've all, we've all seen that look, you know, it, it, it's usually that they're bodying up and they're still getting the foul call, but the percentage that that happens is very small. Post don't block shots. You know, Keaton Ankeville, who played for me, played for him. He's the best high school shot blocker I've ever seen, and I think he had five in his Badger career. Because Bo doesn't believe in blocking shots because it causes fouls. He believes in bodying up and causing the contact from, from your knees to mid chest. All right, It's the same thing. If you're doing this in the full court when you're zigzagging, you're going to get the foul call. If you're bodying up, most officials swallow that whistle and they won't call it. Um, unless, of course, we go back to AAU and then I don't know what kind of whistle you're going to get. Okay? All right, so we do that progression first. We go up and down one on one. All right, next one we do is um, two on three. So give me three defenders, two offensive players. Okay? So we'll go, I'm not going to go all the way through this progression, but we'll go two on three, we'll go three on three. We'll go three on four, we'll go four on four. We'll go four on five, we'll go five on five. We'll go all the way up to we're eventually running our stuff. And I bet we do this two or three days a week because we're working on not only our pressure, but getting pressed. I don't remember the time we were pressed. Um, and I think it's because of this drill. So who's on offense? We got, are you on defense? Yeah. yeah, you need to go go white then so they can see. So flip that around. All right, so take the ball out of bounds. All right, where are you going to go to get the ball? So here's our rule with this. I do not let them dribble until they get past half court. 
So I'm working on I'm working on all the stuff that Coach Gard was talking about, about catching the ball, about clearing, about pivoting, all those things. I mean, I got tons of drills on pivoting and stuff I can show you too, but we probably don't have enough time. But squaring up and all that kind of stuff, that's why we do this drill. They can't catch it. They can't dribble until they get to half court, and they have to catch it inside the three-point line. Those are the two rules we do this. Okay? All right, so go ahead. You guys are going to stop. So white, you're defending red. So how would you defend red? Oh, I would trap them. You got three defenders. Damn right. Take the ball out. Take the ball out again. All right. So you're going to guard the ball. Who are you going to guard? Yeah, go guard him then. There you go. Yep. Good. And you're, you guys are going to let you guys. Red's going this way. You don't want red to score. I want to play you guys, man. There you go. Defend him. Stop. Do it again. All right, so we're trying to not let him get the ball. There we go. Okay, stop, 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 stop. You don't happen to live in the Memorial District, do you? No, all right. Because that would be something I'd have at practice. So you have to catch the ball where? Oh, uh, yeah, probably not in the corner. And what else? Catch it inside the three-point line. I'll give you the, I'll give you the uh, NCAA three-point line. So you have to catch it. And what else? Once you catch it, what can't you do? Can't dribble. All right. Good. Excellent. You get an A for the day. Go ahead. Go. I love this drill for my bigs. I love it for us being able to trap. He should be square. You guys got to square up. All right. Stop. Do it again. So we, we yell at them about lob passes. We yell at them about squaring up. We yell, I mean, this is literally, my point guards really don't tend to have a little bit of a problem with this because they all want to dribble it. But this is a great drill for my bigs. It's also a great thing to teach them how to trap. Because um, you never know when you're going to get down and have to trap. So let's say he catches the ball right here. Give it to him. I teach these guys to cross their legs and don't steal the ball. Don't steal the ball. Even if you can't steal the ball, don't steal the ball. Because half the time it's going to be a foul. Probably more than half the time. Where when you press is the steal going to come from? It's going to come on the pass, right? So I don't let them steal the ball because I don't want them to learn that habit. I want them to trap and I want the guy that defending the other, the other player, he's the one that's going to get the steal. Um, so I like, I, again, for my bigs this is great, for footwork this is great, for looking up the court this is great. Um, and it, again, it was exactly what Coach Guard said, whatever you emphasize they'll do well. You know, we emphasize going to the offensive glass hard and rebounding well. We emphasize trying not to dribble the ball up against pressure. Trapping like this, we really spend a lot of time emphasizing that. Alright, go ahead, let's try it again. <laughs> We, we could work on V-cuts and a couple other things I see, but good. Square up, square up, square up. We're at about 25 seconds, so you might want to get that ball over half court. Travel. Good. All right. The next group, try it. So, again, we've only done it once. I'm giving them a break here. But, got to square with the ball. Got to look up the court. I mean... The, the, the number of, uh... alright, two bigs, I like this group, alright, here we go, everybody's a guard, tuck that under, God gave you, God gave you elbows for a reason, nope, do it again, do it again, so, the first two or three weeks you do this drill, you're going to do what, just exactly what I did, and then you're going to correct them and tell them to square up, and you're going to tell them not to make the lob pass, and that we'd rather have the 10 side. I mean, the, the, the teaching, teachable things in this drill are a lot. Um, you will spend a lot of time teaching. But once they get good at it, five minutes. We do this drill for five minutes, basically, twice a week come probably December. All right, go ahead. And again, we played some really, really good teams in Myrtle Beach. Like I said, that had McDonald's All-Americans, and we were able to break their pressure, I think, because of this drill. All right, then they would go, then they would go live.